Hi, welcome to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell right here at the Arnell School of Fine Art. And you're going to love this lesson. Um, well, I know you're going to love it because it's something that we all enjoy doing, it seems like, from time to time. And one of my, if not my favorite thing uh, in terms of time of the year to paint, and that's snow. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, not snow. Snow is very difficult for so many people to learn to paint. And there's not a week that doesn't go by, almost a day that doesn't go by, that I get comments and people that come in for lessons or, you know, that are on our, all of our different school things. And they have issues with how to make snow look like snow. And there's multiple things about snow that you need to know. Snow is not just something you slap on and you just have a snow scene. Uh, most of the time you got to make your snow look soft and fluffy and make it look natural and that's harder to do than you realize. Now over the years, those of you that have been following me for, well since 1987 basically, I've done numerous snow scenes over, the, over time. But now I'm able with this format to put a little more emphasis on the really all the nuts and bolts of what makes snow work. Not just do a painting and be done with it, you know, in a, two or three sessions and we'll move on. Now I'm going to really take all of these lessons that we're doing as we've just done some and we're going to focus on individual problems with each of these things whether it be how to do leafy trees correctly or dead trees correctly instead of just always being involved in a whole painting we're going to do them now in segments. Now I want to talk to you about snow. First of all snow is not white like people think. And when you think of snow, we think of white because it looks white to the human eye, but really it's not white. And I'm going to prove that to you here with a whole series of photographs that I've brought from my reference library. And most of you know, I have a massive library and I've got about oh, eight or nine books just on snow, snow-capped mountains and landscapes and things like that, frozen water and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do here before we get started is show you several photographs of actual scenes, things, that I, places I've either been and taken photographs of, or these are out of magazines or books or whatever. Now the first one here is Mount Rainier, and I'm going to have them close in. There's two different shots of it. And if you'll notice here, the tone of the snow may appear white to you, but that's not white. That's more of a yellowish gold. On the shadow side, you'll have a, a, a gray. Your snow is always going to have, just like anything else in life, a shadow and a highlight. Now, this is a fully engulfed mountain. There's no stone showing through or no granite or whatever. This is all solid snow. But the snow is not white. I could put a dab of white. In fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a little piece of gesso. I'm going to put up here. Look at the difference. If I can get them to see there. This is white. That's not white. Now let's go up to the top one. Now this is when the sun's going down and you can see the snow takes on more of a pinker tone. That's because of the, all the stuff in the air. It's the pollutants in the air that cause it to do that and the dust and all the things that go on in snow and the way the sun hits it will radiate different things off of it. It's kind of like a prism within itself. So you can see snow is not always white like you think. If you use pure white, and you're going to get this. It's going to look chalky. You all have seen that. You've heard it. You, man, we've all discussed that. Now, when you think about snow, let's get another one here. Now, this one is uh, Mount McKinley. And if you'll notice here, this one's got multiple tones. The shadowed side is a mauveish gray, and the front side is a pinkish white. But you still know it's snow. See, what I'm trying to get across to you folks is that you don't, have to stereotype snow as white. You just don't have to. In fact, we very rarely use white when we paint snow. Now we have white in the mixtures, but we don't do that. We fool the eye by accenting with tints of white to create the effect of a white snow. And you'll see we're, how we're going to do that when we do our studies today. So you can see in that example. Now let's go to another one over here. It's kind of interesting. Now here's one that's a full lit, full scale day and just a beautiful blue sky. Now look at the shadow on the side of the mountain. What color do you see there? Now this one's blue, kind of a bluish gray. And then the front of the mountain, again, is not white. Once again, if I take a little white, put it up there, you'll see how white this is compared to that. 
but that still looks white. It's fooling the eye. So what I want to hopefully get across to you guys is that you don't have to paint with white and you'll see how much better your snow looks, how more realistic it looks. So you'll always have a gray, either a mauvish gray, a bluish gray, a true gray. You can even have a warm gray depending on the circumstance. And by the way, every painting's custom. I can't give you an exact formula for anything, folks. Customizing your painting is up to you. I have to just give you as your teacher, as your mentor, give you the concepts, mixtures that you can use, and you just gotta figure it out through each painting. So you'll see now, each painting has a, each snow scene. This is one of my favorites. I've actually, I don't even know where this came from, but it came out of a magazine. Now look at this, this is a just a landscape. Now if you look at the little shadows in the snow, that's a deep mauvish purple. And the snow, once again, is not white. It's sort of a, a warm orange. It's got a little tint of orange in it. And then you have all the beautiful warm grasses and things that tuck in there. It makes you think it's white because of the contrast rule kicking in. Let's see the deep, dark purple gray tones. That's the shadow of the snow. And it's the highlight that makes it look like snow. It's actually got almost more shadow than it does snow. And the other side's the same way. There's that fox or that coyote there. But see the strong shadows? Those are all a mauvish gray. And I'm going to show you those mixtures here in a little bit. I'm going to go through several of these because I want to really, really get this into your all's head, what's going on here. Well, here's another one. Now, if you notice on this one, see, you look at the snow. Again, it's the shadow part of the snow. is a really soft blue-gray. And then the highlight on the snow, once again, if I put just pure white up against it, you'll notice it's not the same. You see what I'm talking about? So now, hopefully, it's starting to make sense to you. Your snow will be accented in a tint. On the back side of this, you'll see the snow uh, highlights on the road now have sort of a greenish cast to them. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it came out in this particular scene, but that's kind of a grayish green. But that's still snow, and that's how that works out. So see, every painting can be different. As long as the shadow of the snow is sort of a cool tone, then the rest of it can be a warm tone for highlight. For instance, let's go to this one here. Now here's one where we know this is snow, but there's no white in it. It's all gray, a, mauvish, a bluish purple, more on the blue side, and that's a warm, warm highlight, but there's really no white anywhere. But you still know it's snow because of the way you've proceeded with the, uh, the mixtures to fool the eye. That's what makes all of this so exciting, is creating snow and here's one that is really kind of interesting now this one's got the pine trees another clear blue day and if you'll notice all the shadow area is a gray a sort of a light bluish gray then when you get into the open area where the snow is hitting the high spots the sun it's that it's again it's a tinted white it's not white you can see it's almost got an orangey tint to it and i'll show you that formula now this is worth it to me guys, and we can now that we've got this format. Look at this one. I really like this because see, there's no white in this one at all. It's a warm, now this is what we'd call a warm snow scene. So you've got your warm sky. You look at the highlight on the snow here, that's a field. Well, your shadow part of the snow now is more of a mauvish purple, kind of a purplish tint. And then your highlight is sort of an orangish tint. So that gives you a nice warm snow scene if that's what you need for your painting. So see, white doesn't even have to play into this. You just use white as your mixing tool, okay, to kind of get it going there. Now here's another one. We have a lot of snow-covered trees. And even this, that looks white to you, doesn't it? Well, once again, if I take pure white and put it up there, you'll notice it's not. See how white this is? Again, that's more of an orangey tint. Got a slight tint of warmth to it. And then down here, you get back to the more gray uh, shadows, and then you get back to the same warm highlight. It looks white, but it's not white, okay? Pretty interesting how that works. Now, on the back side of this one, this one doesn't really work too well, but I want you to see this. See, if you don't put shadows and stuff, this is just all white. And even though it's not white, it's just a tint. But there's no shadows much, so it's kind of a blah painting. It's sort of monotone. There's a few shadows back in there where you can see contrast, but even those are gray. 
So almost, almost always, well, in fact always, your shadows and snow